So we just got to figure out how much of that firewall we got to cut out to slide it forward about six or seven inches, I think. Three years ago, my daughter sold her goats for 800 bucks and promptly went next door and bought this 41 Ford from our next door neighbor. We've been sitting behind his barn since 1975. Last year, we brought it from Colorado and my here dad to... spent his Dave Ramsey three to six months savings on this rusty frame. <laughs> I did, it's true. Don't be stupid, try not being stupid. So the question is, was it worth it? I don't know, but we're gonna find out this week on Crossroad Garage and Salvage. Thanks for joining us. Well, we're back in the garage here. Been kind of an eventful week for us. And uh, Caitlin looks like a walking zombie because she started volleyball practice this week. But we've actually found a guy. Who's willing to buy our Chad wheels. <laughs> Believe it or not, someone's gonna give us money to take these stupid things off our hands. It's great to be in America. You look like the 4th of July. Yeah, okay. Well, so what Caitlin's going to do instead of steering her pirate ship there is get the front end up on jack stands, snag these wheels off. Snag. Get the back uh, off. I only have two jack Snatched. stands for some Snatched. reason. I think I may have loaned some out. Anyways, we're going to throw the back just on rollers for a second. Wait. The front or the back. Where does this go on here? We're putting it there. Putting it there. Interesting. Very, very interesting. So let so it down we're now. Gonna, no, you gotta take the tire off first and then you can let it down. Caitlin, quit playing with the kittens and come work. She's so little. Oh wait. Well, I would set up the same height as this one. This one is... I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Stand on it. Yeah, that's not sketchy at all. Especially this being so close to the drain. <laughs> It's fine. Three days later. That's that's Martin. He just got out in the rain the other day and we hung him up to dry and he shrunk. <laughs> she hasn't grown. She's still so baby. She is, that's not Martin. No. If you've seen Martin on the channel, you know he's the, the best shop cat. This is just a flea riddled kitten of his. Oh. On the docket today is getting docket? these springs out of here, replacing these spring pockets, mounts, perches. I don't know what you call those, but we're going to have to get those out on both sides and then finish cleaning up the frame, paint it, put those perches back, spring pockets back. I don't know. So, I mean, theoretically it's simple, right? It's four rivets. So we should be good. We got to get on this Caitlin, because as you know, and you guys don't know, to, to, until right now, uh, we had a tree fall on the house during a storm that produced two tornadoes here in our area. And um, well, last few days we've been busier than a one-eyed cat watching two mouse holes. So it's time to get back on the truck and that's what we're gonna do here. So Caitlin, let's drop that shock out of there first. And then- a hammer? No, you just have to take this nut off down here and this nut off the top and let it fall. And then this spring has a retaining clip here that we've got to back out. And then there is a bolt in the bottom that holds it. And luckily... First try. She's getting better at that. But luckily, when you drop the suspension and just let it hang on these, um, especially once we get that shock off of there, this spring loses almost all of its... Uh, sprung tension. So we had a, re a subscriber who sent us some pictures of an awesome 39 Ford fire truck that he built with a 7.3 in it. And that was so cool to see because up to this point, I've been totally guessing about whether or not this was going to work. And um, I now know somebody else made it work. So it is doable. And like I always tell Caitlin, if it's going to get done, 
Somebody's gotta have to do it. And? It might as well be you. It might as well be her. <coughs> Yep, still filming. <laughs> Don't pull it off of the jack stands. You hear me? Yep. You're just you're just turning. No, I'm not. Look. Yes, you are. Look, you twisted that. Well, that was before. This is not actually turning it. No, it's not. You definitely wound it up there. <laughs> well, if you get it tight enough that it won't spin anymore, then the thing will come off. No. If we have to, we can just cut that off because it's just part of the top of that shock. I'm done torching things. No, you're not, because later today we're going to torch that bucket out of there. <laughs> that will not work. No. What? Did you see it? It almost came off. It's bolted on there. You're not going to break it. So why'd you bring this over? What now? Probably need to get that rubber boot off of there and just get a pair of vice grips to hold that thing tight so we can get the nut spun off. Mm -hmm. Guys, if you appreciate what you're seeing here with Caitlin and I, and you're interested in both supporting the channel and getting access to some behind the scenes footage, some members only videos throughout the month and a monthly live stream with Caitlin and I here in the garage, which the first one's coming up on the 30th of this month, 7 p.m. Eastern. That's Friday night, the 30th, 7 p.m. right here on the channel. We're gonna be doing a live stream interaction with our members only. Uh, I'm talking a little bit about upcoming projects, plans for the garage, what we'd like to hear from you about what you wanna see, what we never wanna do again, all that stuff. For a buck 99, you can join this channel member and join the Shade Tree Nation. Right now we've got 12 shirts left out of the 20 that we promised to the first 20 channel members. So sign up today for a buck 99 right here. Hit the join button on the bottom of the screen next to the subscribe button. If you're not subscribed already, hit that one while you're there. And uh, thanks guys, we appreciate the support and we'll see you here on the 30th. One could always have found it. This segment sponsored by Ryobi. <laughs> Built Ford Tough. <laughs> now we can pry that off the bottom and drop it right out of there. If Ryobi got that off, let's see if what it'll do to this little guy. Full disclosure, Ryobi's not doing all the work. We did spray it with a good uh, skeet skeet penetrating lubricant from our friends at uh, Sweet Patina. Get yours at uh, sweetpatina.com. 5% off with code CGS5 at checkout. Let's see what it does here. It's coming right out. It's good stuff. And you have the added bonus of not having to put up with a uh, can of PB Blaster that like gets two squirts and then runs out of aerosol. So that's nice. Just tap that. Did that break? Um, so the spring is broken and appears to have been for some time. Why is it not coming out? Because there's still a bolt in the bottom. Oh. You can see by the end of it here. That's an acorn that was in there. That's been broken for a while. Awesome. I just don't know what size that nut is. Bigger you're, pretty, you're pretty good at picking it first time. You want to figure it out? So update, our camera battery died. Caitlin has the wrench stuck because she thought she could wind it down through there. It's an inch and an eighth socket. We know that now. Which means we're probably just going to need to get an inch and an eighth uh, box end wrench. Yep, that would give you just all the torque you need right there. Just... Anyhow, we'll get one of those on here down here at the bottom and just crank on it till it breaks. Got a, it's got a, like a cup that it's in. So the wrench, the problem I'm having is that the wrench is hitting the side of the cup. So it's kind of on it at an angle. You want to get a bar on that? Yeah. 
I'm probably going to have to get off the tire in order to do that. Wait, look, though. Cool trick, bro. Let's go to work. I set, where did I set the bar the other day? Don't know. Uh, put it somewhere I would remember it. I don't remember where that is. Did you put it back where it belongs? That would be a cool place to put it where you remember it. No, I put it somewhere where I would remember it, but you wouldn't remember it. Because I'm usually one that goes and gets it. I don't remember where I put it. Where'd that go? Where were you using it the other day? Uh, we used it um, when we took one of the tires off. Oh, it's on the back of the frame over there. That's where I put it. Might need a bigger bar. More leverage always works. It's science. I'm gonna get you a shop shirt that just says force multiplier on it instead of Caitlin. Then <laughs> 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 her. Here across the garage, what would you call a low budget, high effort, and mediocre results kind of shop? Hey, you got that right. Let me see if I can just cut this brake line. That will not make my life easier. Now my truck doesn't have brakes. Stop. Let's be honest, your truck didn't have brakes when we bought it. <laughs> You're almost there. Whatever, show off. I may have the back of a 100, 108 year old, but I've got the shoulders of a 94 year old. Actually, I've just got that Asian spinal condition. It's called Young No Mo. <laughs> Which reminds me of my favorite Bible verse, Romans chapter 7, verse 24. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. I think if you just hit the face of that spring right there, it'll... There you go. An incredible aim. All right, stop making a mess. Stop making a mess. All right, so you can see what we got to do here, Caitlin. I'm just going to center torch these rivets. And until going to melt out? Well, this, this head will melt off, and we can pull it out, and then we can pop them back through the frame. And then we'll have to figure out how to get... They can rattle around in there for the rest of their what? days. No, that cross member's in the way. I don't know. I have to figure out how to bolt them in there. Maybe we can go from under. Oh yeah, we should be able to go from underneath. But oh, looks like there's maybe one in the bottom here too that needs to come off. Great. All right, so it looks like there's actually two rivets on the bottom. There's one here. And there's one here. Pulled that rubber bump stop out of here. So we got to torch six spots to peel this off of here. And then we're going to be evaluating the frame behind it to make sure that it's not as badly rusted as this thing is. It would be horrible if it's got a weak spot rusted in the frame there. But these are the calculated risks we take, huh, Caitlin? Yes. Unfortunately, yeah. We're not very good at math. Uh, we've been cutting, torching a little bit. You see we've cut the head off of these four uh, rivets here and then two on the bottom. And got this guy out. You can see why we had to replace it. This side, we went ahead and started tearing apart off camera. Turns out this spring is also broken and part of it's left in there. So I've called around to see if I can find springs and it looks like nobody carries them here locally. So I may be overnight ordering those from eBay or something, but I'm feeling optimistic about all this because, uh, well, number one, what was behind that frame had a little bit of flake that we had to beat off with a hammer, but it's, good solid frame still. So 
we can clean that up. We're going to go ahead and wire reel that, paint this out tonight, and then tomorrow we can put this uh, all back together. So uh, I'm going to get the torch on this guy here. And if you hadn't seen this last time, I've got a new bracket here to hold this trailing arm. But this was a rust repair they patched in here and welded it to this nut. So I'm going to have to cut that off. You know the deal. Tell them what's what. I don't know what's what. Time lapse. Oh, time lapse. It's too far away. They make these cool things called extension cords. There's, there's two of them right there. What did I do with my punch? There it is. I'm just gonna push these back far enough to let this drop. There we go. Oh yeah. Look at that side. That was even worse than the front side. That was all that was holding. That was all that was holding it on. Look at how easy this opens up. Unbelievable. This is what the new one looks like. There we go. There we go. Well, you know what? If I'm smart, and I'm not usually, I'm going to go ahead and clean that up and paint it before I put that on there. Yeah. Use my kidneys there for once. What? Only thing left to do here is to get that guy off and you know it's not really even that exciting to watch it's burning the heads off of six rivets and then uh, beating the snot out of it until it falls off want to get as much of that off of there as we can. All right, well, we're getting ready to clean this up and it's going to require the uh, literal wheel of death over there. So while I'm doing that, uh, Kayla, I need you to put a mask on while I'm doing that. I've got my chin guard on. Ooh. Caitlin's going to finish driving out that bolt on the back of this trailing arm so we can get that all the way down, cleaned up, and painted all the way around. We have no more masks. Ah, it's all definitely right. not like well, I just you're said. You're just going to have to hold your breath. Wait, can I get a heavy-duty one? You don't need to put on your paint mask. Why not? No, you can if you want to. So we're going to clean this side up here. Put, put the spiders! We've uh, There's spiders in here. Test, well, don't put the spiders in your nose. That'll give you nightmares. We've kind of tested on this side here, and I'm pretty happy Jump with the way scared. this cleaned up. Truthfully, if we can get the other side looking as good as this one, um, we'll be in good shape. So we're going to finish cleaning this up with a paint stripper, and then we'll degrease it, wipe it down, and then we'll start painting with the blackout, what rust preventative from Sweet Patina. You ready? What? They rolled the tire down the driveway. <laughs> You let you let the tire roll out into the darkness. <laughs> okay. <sighs> 
Well, when you're trying to marry a 41 with a 2007-3, you just got to consider all of this progress. I want to show you guys something here. I cut those body mounts off, those cab mounts off, with a torch. I, I used fire to cut metal. And all it did was burn a little bit of that paint right around the edge here. It didn't damage any of the rest of this. Even after I cleaned it up with a wheel, some of this is still sticking. So I am really impressed with oh, this yeah. blackout paint. Oops. So we got to get a 3M kind of wire or paint stripper wheel on here. Clean this up and then we'll wipe it down and get ready to paint. I'm going to clean this up. Actually, it's late enough. I might clean that up tomorrow. But uh, I'm going to clean up this trailing arm here and the other side and get those ready to paint top and bottom too. And be all set. Yeah, because it's just work. Just one thing after the other. And then before you know it, there's nothing left to do because you're done. I, I wonder mean, what that feels like. Except to shower. <laughs> Probably going to need a shower. So while we go to uh, time lapse here, why don't you enjoy the classical stylings of whatever copyright free music I can find to put into this segment. All right, while Caitlin gets started on this side, I want to give you guys a little bit of a rundown on this truck. If you're just joining us, new to the channel, haven't seen what we've been doing with this. This is a truck that came from behind our neighbor Paul's house in Colorado. Caitlin bought it when she was 12 with some money that she had got from selling her goats. And it had a flathead V8 in it, sitting on the engine stand over here. We're gonna rebuild that someday for probably another project down the road. But, uh, she wanted to build her first truck when she was 12, just like I had built my 47 Chevy. So this is the product of that effort three years ago when she bought this thing. We brought it here to Ohio about a year and a half ago. I guess a little bit over a year ago. And um, we started on this, what, two months ago? Yeah. Yeah, two months ago we really started in earnest on it. Ernest. And what we know about it is it used to belong to the, uh, the county. It was a municipal vehicle. That's where all the orange comes from. But the OD green on the firewall and inside of the cab, um, that is because this truck was specialty built Wait, for the... These? No. But this was specially built for the Civilian Conservation Corps. Well, guys, we have discovered something about this truck that really neither of us saw coming. The truth is we thought the whole time this was gonna be an old pre-war military truck because of the OD Green, but the stuff about the Civilian Conservation Corps is really incredible to me. The, the CCC was part of, of uh, Roosevelt's New Deal, and along with the Works Project Authority, the WPA, and the TVA, the Tennessee Valley Authority, the New Deal put men back to work in the post-depression era. From 1933 to 1943, the CCC, the Civilian Conservation Corps, that this truck was built for, was building roads, bridges, mills. They were building buildings in national parks. They were planting forests. They were building fire roads in the national forests. They were building fire breaks. They were giving men a purpose. Men between the age of 18 and 25 who were unmarried and out of work could sign up for the CCC, go live in a CCC camp, be fed and get paid for the work they were doing. And this is an era when 25% of young men were unemployed. It gave, it gave these guys a purpose because it restored for them an opportunity to exercise a work ethic that opportunity for exercising had been taken away from them during the depression. And I think that's really fascinating because the truck that we're working on here is something that I'm hoping will be part of the work that I'm doing as a dad to teach Caitlin a work ethic like I learned from my dad and like he learned from his dad. You know, the first guy that, that gave me a hunting rifle was a man named Bun Lathrop. Bun was a young man in the post-depression era and actually worked for the CCC in northeastern Pennsylvania. 
used to mow mow lawn alongside of the road with a hand sigh cutting grass. But in 1941, July, when this truck was built, we were only five months away from Pearl Harbor, and the truth is that any historian will tell you this, we were already ramping up for war. And the CCC was being turned into a mobilization element that was helping build infrastructure for our military, building out camps and training centers, expanding um, existing forts. And this truck belonging in Colorado, I, I have every reason to believe it spent its whole life in Colorado. Uh, it could have been part of the building out of the Pinion Canyon training site, which was south of where we lived. It could have been part of expanding Fort Carson. It, it could have been part of the effort to mobilize a nation for war in the Second World War where both my grandparents served, uh, one grandfather in the Pacific Theater, the other in the European. And we're working on a truck that I have every reason to believe was part of the effort to prepare our nation for that experience. And for that reason, I'm really excited. Okay, so Caitlin's gonna gently stir that. Just getting everything off the bottom using that old door shim. While she's doing that, I'll show you how these cleaned up here. So first off, those are scuffed and ready to go. This frame really cleaned up nicely, especially in there where I was really worried about rust compromising that frame. Try not to drip it all over the ground. And what you guys are seeing here is one of the beautiful things about this blackout paint. You can spray it if you add some reducer. You can brush it on. You can roll it on. Oh, no. There's all kinds yeah, the of options. Mm -hmm. We get back tomorrow. Uh, we've got springs coming. We're gonna have to wait until let's see. Today is Monday. They'll be here Thursday. So hopefully we can get them in before the end of the week. But tomorrow we'll go ahead and start working on getting the cab figured out, cutting the firewall out. We've got some pictures we're going to be going off of um, with our, our friend with the 39. But I think the cab is going to have to sit up high enough that these little wings here don't come past the frame. So these are going to have to stay above the frame, which on the 49, or excuse me, on the 41, that's how they were. Um, there's wooden blocks underneath the cab connecting it to the frame. So, and I think we do want it to sit a little bit higher. We do want to be able to use it as kind of a utility tow truck. Um, it'll be our main tow vehicle for the channel going forward. And we're not going to be squatting down the rear end. So it's not going to make sense to drop this in the front end. We want a one ton truck that can actually tow and haul and work. So we're probably going to be leaving it at about that height, I think, actually. Leaves us lots of good room under the hood. We've got plenty of room up front. We'll have plenty of room for wheels, entire package, whatever we end up doing on the front end here. So we just got to figure out how much of that firewall we got to cut out to slide it forward about six or seven inches, I think. And then we'll start fabbing that firewall back in once we get the mounts tacked on here. One day later. Hamia washer a lock washer and a nut i know you've been doing volleyball conditioning all week but i woke up this morning and my thighs were killing me from squatting in here last night painting this frame I felt like i'd run a mile i would try and lose weight but i'm so used to winning i'm not sure i could <laughs> i don't even know how to lose Hotter than the devil's armpit in here. Is that a barbecue sauce? No, it's just bad theology. <laughs> Here's... All right. Well, we're getting ready to cut the firewall here because we're kind of at a stopping point on the suspension. So 
So Caitlin's cleaning up the firewall, getting that voltage regulator, and there's like a little wire junction box there that's running three sets of cables into it. Um, we've got obviously the green tape across the top. That's our effort at a straight line across the top here. And then we've got chalk lines running down just inside of um, this roll in the, the metal here. Now, I don't have any metal shaping uh, equipment, so I'm not going to be able to bead roll anything. I'm trying to keep these molded lines on the firewall, and then because anything we do is going to be going back in from there and then around the back of all this. So I believe cutting here and coming up on the inside of that mold line is going to let us get up here where we need to be, but I could be, actually now that I'm looking at that, I could be totally wrong. See the side of the valve cover there? Basically goes straight back to here. I might need to go on the outside of that up to here and get that cut first. The other problem I have is I'm not entirely sure that the cab is square left to right at this point. So I don't know. What I don't want to do is cut away too much and have to build back part of that firewall. I'd love to just cut it once and be able to slide the cab forward and then build from the inside around the back of the engine and over the transmission, but we'll see how that goes. Now that I'm talking through it on camera, Caitlin, I think we're just going to go ahead and send it, just cut it. Ready? <clears throat> Let's cut it. Once we get the truck up on wheels, we can slide it out and we can move the cab where we need it to get the cab mounts placed on the frame. But there's no reason we can't cut that. We're going to cut it out here down to the bottom here. Okay, that door doesn't work. Door doesn't work now? No. It used to work, didn't it? That's how everything goes around right here. That door works. Doesn't work well, but it works. So we're going to go ahead and take the steering wheel all the way out. So we're just going to cut the two bolts that are holding it into the dash right now because I'm not sure we're going to reuse this mount. Ouch! Ow. Hurt my hand. Need some cutters. You don't need bolt cutters either. They cut it, don't they? They do. Take the steering wheel. Put it on the part shelf. Dude. Oh, Caitlin, I've been wrong before. I could be wrong again, but I think this firewall's almost ready to come out of here. Nope. Still got some corners holding on. There's some bracing in these two corners here. Let me show you. I think we just need to come up here. That'll let go of that. All right, Caitlin. I'll let you do the honors of pulling the firewall out of your truck. Look how little it is. Grab that gas spoon and get it out of there. Hey, you gotta come over the shifter. Right.
They say if it was raining hundred dollar bills, I'd be the guy that gets hit in the eye with a Canadian quarter. <laughs> That's about how this week's gone for us. We had another tree fall down this morning. Took power line out, crossed the driveway twice. And uh, Caitlin was so sick yesterday, she couldn't get out of bed. And all our parts arrived, so that was a bonus until we realized these new springs Too chubby. are a sixteenth of an inch thicker in the roll diameter than the OEM springs. I don't know why these are listed as OEM springs if they're not identical, but basically they won't fit in the pocket. You can see right there, it's this should be up inside of here, not below it. So I've beat on it, I've hammered on it, I've moved weight around on it. We've put ratchet straps on it. It's not happening. So shocks are here, rear shocks are here. Suspension is getting bolted back up, but basically without springs, we can't get it on its wheels, which means we can't get it out in the driveway, which means we can't get it under the gantry crane, which means we can't move the cab to mock it up, which means we also can't lift the engine to replace the oil pan, which is something that was on my list to do this week. So, you know, all together, been a pretty unproductive week. Pretty unproductive week. Yeah. I guess this is our way of saying, <laughs> Toodles. you know what we're looking at doing next time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you back here then. Toodles.